Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to my YouTube channel again. We're going to have another look at my Velomobile and see what updates I've done. When I first got the Velomobile, it came with a Neo Drives hub motor. This is the original one that came with it, and it's got a standard 8-speed cassette on it. And looking at it, it generally speaking looks quite well engineered. If you look fairly closely, however, you'll see that you can't actually take the hub motor apart to service it. Well, I guess you probably could, but you'd have to take all the spokes out as well. Now, this actually worked really well for a while. And then what happened was when I was driving over some fairly extreme potholes, occasionally the motor would conk out. This is most likely due to a, probably a slightly loose wire somewhere. Not quite sure where. Anyway, I contacted NeoDrives and uh, they basically won't help. NeoDrives do not provide any technical information to help you repair it. So I really cannot recommend anybody buys anything from NeoDrives because you're stuck if anything goes wrong. Now, because NeoDrives refused to give me any kind of technical information to try to help maintain their motor, I decided I'd swap the motor over for a standard Bafang hub motor like this one. It's got a fairly large hub motor here, and I managed to fit on the standard 8-speed cassette here. And that worked very well. In fact, most of my previous videos have this motor fitted. And it really does go extremely well. No problems at all. Except that, for some reason, if you look carefully at how the spacing of the gears are here, it turned out to be very, very difficult to adjust the gears so they worked smoothly on the Velomobile. Since it's got a standard 8-speed cassette, I really couldn't quite see what the problem was. But there's obviously some kind of difference in thickness, either of the hub or on the length of the spindle. Anyway, it turns out that it wasn't very easy to adjust the gears on it. Making any kind of adjustments to the gears on a Velomobile isn't very easy, especially when you end up having to get down quite low on the ground, and then you have a view a bit like this. So you can see there isn't that much space on this one to adjust the gears. Of course, you could just tip the Velomobile over on its side on a, an inflatable um, mattress or something like that, but it's still not that easy to work on. So after having had quite a few problems with the hub motors, I decided to switch the wheel back to a standard 20-inch commuter wheel with a standard Shimano 8-speed cassette system. So basically got the same kind of wheel that you'd have on a normal commuter bike. And because it's so tricky to adjust the gears on a Velomobile, I made a couple of rollers like these, which you stick under the back wheel, and that helps you uh, turn the wheel, help you get the gears adjusted right, set the bike up, and set the chain lengths, everything you possibly expect. So having decided to remove the hub motor, the obvious alternative is a mid-drive motor. Mid-drive motors are the ones that go on the front where the pedals are. So the trick with a mid-drive motor is to remove the original uh, chain wheel and hub and replace it with a motor. And here's the mid-drive motor fitted. You basically have to undo the original bottom bracket and remove the, in my case it was a cassette bearing and the chain wheel, and basically you reinstall it with the hub motor. It's not that difficult, you've got to remember that the nuts and bolts on the right hand side are all left hand thread, so you have to remember which way around some of the bolts go. Unfortunately not all bikes are absolutely identical with this respect, so there's not much point in me showing exactly how it worked. Now although technically this motor is being run from 48 volts and is technically rated around 750 watts, uh, I'm going to try to actually make it as legal as I possibly can. So one of the good things about this Bafang motor is that it's actually user programmable. That means that I can make it road legal uh, in the UK by basically reprogramming the controller for it. And indeed that's how most of the commercial ones actually done, even if they don't admit it. 
and under the seat I've retained the standard 48 volt 20 amp hour battery which is probably a little bit too big but it's quite useful. I opted for the standard 860 uh, controller because it just happened to look really nice and it's programmable so I've selected the traditional display on this one and it shows you real time voltages, time, that's actually incorrect now um, it's got kilometres, you can do it metric or imperial and various details about your last drive and it's got a little uh, controller next to it to increase or reduce the power levels. I made a couple of other modifications here. I've put an extra control box on here with a fuse, fuse there, and it enables me to get the voltage level here. And I've got a little switch here that turns on and off some extra USB ports there. So just as before, works normally as you're going along. Go to turn it around. And it's absolutely brilliant. It's got so much less rolling resistance or drag than before. That old Bafang mid, that old Bafang um, hub motor had lots and lots of drag, so this one just seems to coast along really easily. It's much quieter. Although having said that, nearly all the road noise is due to the potholes. And it said there that it was running along there just a few watts. I think just in the corner of my eye, I think I saw it just doing 47 watts just now be quite fun to try it and see how much I can get. Let's put it up to maximum power and try it. Whoa! This is quite fun. Uh, there's cars in the way down here. So they don't always look out for me so I'll be a bit careful going past them. Now under UK law the uh, electric bike rules say that you can only have 250 watts, which is vaguely um, defined, and a maximum assist speed of six, well, 15.5 miles an hour, 25 kilometers an hour. And I just reprogrammed this, and I accidentally put 16.5 kilometers an hour instead of 25 kilometers an hour. So it actually cuts out at about, I don't know, 10 miles an hour. And I didn't notice, because the automobile is so easy to ride, that I thought that there's something wrong with the display. It suddenly said zero watts assist. So on the good side, it proves that automobiles are so much more efficient than a bicycle. But on the other hand, it means I really need to program this some more so I can go up hills and I'm allowed to use a bit more power than I should have. So I'm going to look, break out the laptop and we'll reprogram it using a, pro, a USB lead and we'll see what we can do. To reprogram it, you basically just pull this lead apart, which is the one that goes to the display. At the other end of the lead, lead down, down there, goes to the controller. So you don't actually reprogram the display end, you're actually reprogramming the motor end. Right, so I use Linux, uh, basically because it's not Windows. I generally use the BDAC controller. You connect it to the serial port, click on read, and it will read the flash memory stored in the controller. And you've then got a number of options, including reading the reports and generally changing all the settings. The ones that I normally change are the basic current limit and the wheel diameter, and for the UK, setting the maximum speed. Once you've set them how you like, you can just uh, upload them back to the controller. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to click the subscribe button below. Thank you very much.